Hey, how's it going there? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today we're going to talk about reverb, namely the stock reverb within Bitwig. Is it any good? Should you use it? Let's get into this. So here I have the reverb, and I'm going to run some uh, drums through it here so we can hear the quality of the reverb sound. And this is pretty much a stock setting. Now, on first listen, it may sound okay. I mean, let me turn it off so you can hear what the snare sounds like. It's just like that. But what I don't like about this snare is all of this high-end kind of sizzle. It sounds like a, a snare belt or something going out of control. It, it doesn't sound like any actual real space. And it doesn't respond like a real space normally would. Now, if I compare it to this Oral River reverb here, which is a free reverb, that sounds more natural, more like a real space. You can almost picture some space that would sound like that. It sounds maybe a little cavernous, a little like the hard surfaces of the walls, but you know, a warehouse or something, but you can kind of picture it. This doesn't really put you into any particular place. It just sounds artificial and weird. So that's good if you want to do some sort of effect, but if you want to have some sort of a realistic sounding um, reverb um, for, you know, vocals or anything like that, um, that's not going to work so good. Here's a realm. This is a um, Native Instruments reverb that was free for a minute. I think it, I'm not sure if it's still free or not, but I really like the sound of it. I can really picture that space. It's warm, it's it's full, it's rich. Now let's switch back over to Bitwig. Ugh. Now, here's the thing though. The problem with the reverb in Bitwig is that you're not supposed to use it stock. If you use it stock, I'm, what I mean by stock, just as, it, as you get it, right? It, it just doesn't sound very good. And the thing of it is, is that it's not really that different from these other two. It's just that it's stripped down to its very main basic components. So what you're supposed to do is put some stuff into the tank, maybe put some stuff into wet FX on the reverb, and then you can get something that sounds a lot more like these other guys. So what I did was I went ahead, even though there's stuff in here, they weren't active at the time. And I have this kind of sound better button. So let's activate the sound better button and see what we get. Sounds better. Sounds better to my ear. Now if I compare it to these guys. It's different, but to me, it doesn't kind of stick out as being horrible. It sounds more like a real space. Um, and of course, you can continue to shape it. What I did here was I added some chorus. And that basically gives us what modulation generally gives us in um, other reverbs. I added some EQ to the tank here. Also, this chorus is in the tank. This EQ is in the tank. And that contours the sound a bit, makes it sound a little bit more realistic. This adds complexity, the chorus here. And then in the wet section here, I just kind of EQ'd it so that we took out some of the, the low end and accentuated some of the uh, mid range here. And I also turned down the response of the higher end after 40 of uh, 4,000 Hertz. Um, so it wasn't as ringy up in the higher register there. So that I think does sound better, especially with a snare and brings us more into the realm of what these others can do. Now let's even look at the reverse. Let's go to realm here cause it's pretty easy to adjust. And then we're going to make it sound like how the stock reverb sounds without any effects in it. So we turn down all the modulation. Turn down the dampening here. Um, I guess we would just get the size here because it, it sounds better that way anyway. We can leave this um, diffusion up because we do have a diffusion here. 
uh, reverbs all the way up. Let's turn uh, the low cut and the high cut off. And we don't really have to play around with that and let's hear what that sounds like. Now we're getting that unnatural high end again. It sounds a lot like Bitwig here without the sound better. Actually, it sounds a little bit less ringy and noisy. So the point here is, is that the quality of this reverb isn't significantly worse than or better than these other guys, I don't think. Um, it's just that it's not using these tricks that are almost always used within uh, commercial reverbs. Uh, this one as well has the modulation, so let's get it to sound horrible. Uh, let's turn off all the uh, modulation here, no modulation depth. Turn off the dampening intensity. Um, what else? Let's just flatten out the EQ here. I should just type in this. There we go. That's good. And let's flatten that out. I'm just going to type it in this time. And uh, diffusion's fine. Room size is fine. Yes, let's hear what that sounds like. Yep. Pretty much like garbage. Don't like that at all. So, anyway, point being is that any kind of good sounding reverb you can make sound kind of like the stock uh, Bitwig setting just by turning off all the things that make it sound pretty good. Namely, the modulation, the dampening, the EQing. Um, if you turn those guys off, then you pretty much get the same sound. Sir. You're not really missing so much. And um, we, we still have the diffusion and the size and some different things to make it sound good. Um, and again, I went in here and added a chorus into the tank, some EQ into the tank, that helps a lot. And uh, EQing the output, you can try, you know, uh, doing some different settings with the chorus to increase or decrease the modulation and the amount of mix. And you can do a lot of different things, get yourself a low and high cut to, to match something more of what's happening here. But in any case, doing that sort of thing really does help a lot, even beyond just um, changing the cutoff here and the um, high and low uh, kind of multiplication. You can do more using these uh, tanks. So I guess the, the lesson here is that these are meant to be used. You shouldn't be using this naked. You should be using it with effects in, in it that will kind of round it out and make it more complete. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. And I hope this is also helpful just to help you to understand what the different settings are. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can um, use another kind of stock reverb within Bitwig that isn't this one that in a lot of cases will give you some better results than this one can. And I'm going to go over some of the different settings that and how they work. And when you understand how reverbs work, you can use that, that knowledge in any reverb pretty much that you come in contact with and you'll know how to set it up. So this will be good not just for people who are wanting to get a really great reverb sound in Bitwig, but if you just want to get a better understanding of how reverb works, then tune in to this next episode. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and bye.